Well, the Ghana Prison Service is responsible for the safe custody of prisoners here in our country, as well as their welfare, reformation, and rehabilitation. Ghana's prisons house between 11,000 and 14,000 inmates, with females forming approximately 2% of the prison population. The service is under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of the Interior. Ghana Prison Service currently spends one series ATP per head feeding fee for inmates. That issue we've talked about so many times is still is the same. Joy News documentary, Locked and Forgotten by Set Kwame Boateng, brought to the fore the dehumanizing conditions at Ghana's prisons, which have seen little improvement despite countless appeals. That chilling report about the inhumane conditions led the judiciary to revisit its stance on remand prisoners and the Justice for All program. So this morning, I've got Dr. Stephen Wengam, who's the chairman, Prison Service Council, and Solomon Apia, President, nominee Prisons Council and uh, Chairman of the Project Ifiase Planning Committee. We're going to talk about something that is really, really <coughs> important. I think the last time that we had you, uh, Reverend Rengam, we said that anybody could go to the prisons. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. That's and that's right. why we have to make the place comfortable because mm. it could be anybody. So please, have you slept there before? Well, I haven't slept there before, but I've visited a, a, a number of, we have 43 prison installations in Ghana. And I visited a, a good number of them, mm. so I have a feel of what pertains there. And I tell you, it's, it's not the best, and that okay. is why we are here. Mm. We, we, are, we are on the move to ensure that we can change the face of Ghana prisons. Yeah. So, Mom, have you been sentenced like a day spent <laughs> in the nights in prison before? Not at all. Mm. Not at all. Okay. So, how do we intend to change it? I think uh, even the one city's ATP is still the same, hasn't changed. Well, um, it, like, like rightly said, the conditions in our prisons is quite is, is very deplorable. We have 43 prison installations in Ghana. Out of the 43, only three are purpose built or were purpose built. Um, Did you say purpose built? Built I mean, to look like and feel like a prison? Yes, it was built as a prison facility. Hmm. The rest were old colonial forts, warehouses that have been converted into prison um, facilities. You can imagine uh, maybe trying to use a garage you know, um, as a hospital facility. No matter how you can get the best architect, no matter how you try to redesign the building, it won't serve its purpose. Mm. So this has led to congestion. Currently, as I speak now, we have about 15,000 prison inmates in Ghana. And uh, if you go to Kumasi Central Prisons, the capacity of the place is 450. Currently, it's housing to a little over 2,500 people with only five toilet facilities. Mm -hmm. You go to Insawam, the same. Eight, it's supposed to house 850 people. It's housing a little over 3,500 people. So a prison cell, um, earmark for let's say about 20 people, is accommodating 91. They sleep in shift. 20 you see the way, 91. Yes. You see the way mm -hmm. the, no, the sardine, how the fishes are packed. Mm. That's how they sleep. They are skin touching each other. So skin diseases, skin diseases is very, very, skin disease is very common in that place. Normally by 6 p.m. we have to lock them up. And we are compelled to build a toilet facility, put a toilet facility in the cell. It's not even, it's, 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 it's an open space. You can imagine struggling to sleep and your neighbor has to attend you know, to, to, to nature's call. Um, another challenging situation now, this congestion leads to lack of natural air, lack of, you know, fresh air. We also have another serious challenge that has to do with the health of the inmate. Um, out of these 43 prison installations, we don't even have a single hospital. We don't even have a single medical doctor. I'm told a few years ago we have three doctors, they had to leave because conditions of service it's, it's not the best for them. They don't even have the tools to work with. Mm. Our infirmaries are literally empty. If you get a paracetamol there, that would, then that day was a good day for, for, no, for, for, for us. Um, we've been putting up this argument with 5,000 prison officers plus 15,000 inmates making 20,000. How come we don't have a prison hospital? We have a police hospital, 37 military hospital. And you are dealing with about 20,000 people, population, mm. and we do have a hospital for them. It's, 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 it, it doesn't speak well of, of Ghana, the world acclaimed Ghanaian hospitality. 
I mean, this this situation is beginning to you know, bring to the fore whether we really uh, um, <laughs> probably have lived up to you know that kind of mm. uh, that kind of image so, about so us. So I see the challenges are enormous because uh, officers also have their own issues in terms of accommodation. We're not only talking about the prison the prisoners who are locked who are locked up but also the officers themselves. If it, the barracks that is currently housing um, the prison officers, officers um, were built in the 1920s and 30s. They've ne ne not seen renovation since then. The buildings are crying for paint. You know, a prison officer with, let's say, a family of about five living in a single room. You have their fridges and TVs on the veranda. You know, and only 40% of them live in the barracks. 60% live in rented accommodation. Mm. So every now and then you come to the prison's headquarters and find landlords pursuing us for rent because we are always owing. You know, another challenge we have is we have 15,000 acres of land. We've only been able to cultivate 1,000 acres. With 15,000 prison population... W w your, your lands were exactly... Um, let's say at at in Sawam. Okay, so you have extra land there, oh, yes, bare we, land. Bare land. We okay. can do. We, we can feed ourselves and even feed Ghana. I dare say we can feed Ghana mm. because about sixty percent of the prison population is forty years and below. But if if you're going to embark on such a large scale farm, you have to do mechanized farming. We don't have the resources. Mm. Our mandate is to reform and rehabilitate. We are supposed to give them skills training. We have carpentry shop, tailoring shop. They are literally empty. If you go to Kumasi with 2,500 prison inmates with only one carpentry shop, when will each prisoner have the chance, you know, to, to visit the carpentry shop to, to learn, mm -hmm. you know, that that's, that skills training? Well, that we'll that. come back to a lot more of the challenges. I want to go to Solomon because I, I understand, per the description, that y you are more like the president on the board. You're representing the president on the board, correct? Okay. Um, to an extent, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how do we intend solving this, and where do we want to take it from? From that angle, I know that the prison's board, on its own, I mean, you're trying to do something, but from that angle, what's the plan? Okay. When when the designation, the president's nominee, there are three of us. You have Chairman Wingham, you have myself, and then another council member. Mm. So we're, we're members just as much as the other 10, so which make up okay. the 13 member board. Sure. So we can't really uh, speak necessarily for the executive. But um, this is what the government has done for the prisons. Um, you mentioned one CD80 persons. It is woefully low. Okay, but when you when you consider the fact that it used to be 60 persons, 80 persons. Oh, sorry, 80 persons. It used to be 80p. Yes, 80 persons for breakfast, for lunch, for supper, including the contractor's profit. I see right. the person cooking the food. Yes, so that's 80 persons per head, and then now it's one CD 80 persons because it was increased. It's better than the 80 persons, mm -hmm. but it's not good. Yeah. We need to yeah. do more. Okay. Um, we put up um, what we call schools at Insawam, at Wa, and it's for those who, who are interested, inmates who are interested in formal education. Mm. So these guys, for example, last year, they, they had a 100% pass, pass rate for those who, who, who went for the exams. Those are the inmates. So then they can come out with an education. Mm. Um, we've put up ICT centers, or the government, I should say, has put up ICT centers in every single prison. It's given hundreds of millions to the building of the only maximum security prison in this nation mm. and it's still under construction it started under um jerry rawlings regime and it's continued till date but so much money has been pumped into it so far so all of these things are laudable <coughs> things that the government has done mm. it is not sufficient that's why we're here that's why we're launching project ifiase and it's, when we say it's not sufficient, we're not saying that the government, uh, the government's work is not sufficient. When yeah, you, but we know how, you know, we've burdened government so much. There are times mm -hmm. that we have to do certain things for ourselves. Exactly. And I guess this is one of those. Exactly. Um, but but to, 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 to turn the discussion a little bit, or to add to a little bit to what the chairman said, um, one thing that is often overlooked is what officers go through when it comes to risk. You see, most of our people don't have guns, yet they're supposed to escort these um, some, sometimes hardened criminals mm -hmm. um, either to a farm or to court. 
these, the, the situations of in Takra, they were an inmate cut off an officer's arm. The situation where they tell you, you know we have a peephole. So like he feigns as if he's sick, you open the peephole and he looks inside and the inmate takes this and puts it in your eye, you know, or takes a blade and cuts up your face. And we don't have any insurance scheme to cover you. Even though your, your job is such a high risk, you're ensuring public safety. Because you see, this is one thing we don't talk about. Most of us think public safety has to do with the police. And they're doing a swell job, a great job. But they can't do the work without prisons. Let me explain why. When somebody enters prisons, we're supposed to reform and rehabilitate. In other words, you're supposed to treat them, find out what the illness is, what got them there in the first place, then assess them. When you assess them, you can classify them. If you classify them, if you have space and infrastructure, you can put them in different segments and treat them, rehabilitate them. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't have the infrastructure. We don't have the means to even um, classify and then treat them. So these guys, a lot, a, a high percentage, and I can't give you the figure, some go in, let's say on remand for many years, according to like, for example, if you've seen Seth, Seth Kwame Boateng's um, work, they go in for it's many years. from here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it, uh, it goes in, they go in for many years, and then they go and learn from the masters who are there already, from Atai and whoever mm -hmm. else. They listen to the tolis at night, they admire them, they come out and try and practice it. Mm -hmm. So Ghana, which used to be safe, we didn't used to need all these barbed wires and electric, all, all electric wire fencing. Mm -hmm. Now we need them. And sometimes people point the finger at neighboring nations and saying they are corrupting our youth. No, they're not. A prison system needs assistance in actually reforming people so that we don't have a revolving door of creating more criminals. Sure. But rather, we reform people and they can come back and be of service mm. to Mother Ghana. Reverend William, that description of uh, an officer in one single room with the entire family and the fridge and the cooker and all that, that's more like they're also in prison, you know? I always refer to the Ghana prison officer as a, as a prisoner by, by extension because they, they spend eight hours every day in that deplorable condition. They pick skin diseases or communicable diseases from the prisoners and they transfer to their family members. Um, you asked a very good question, what are we doing? We were sworn into office in December. We, we hit the ground running by trying to reach out to our major stakeholders. Don't forget, we only take custody of the prisoners. The judiciary, they sentence them to whatever it is, they bring them to us. The police begin the process. Mm -hmm. We pay the courtesy call on the chief justice, and then we briefed him on the state of Ghana prisons, gave him figures, painted vivid picture, and she was moved to tears. And therefore, um, gave a directive that all judges should take tents and visit the prisons. They did, and we all know the response. Then also she directed that the month of April and May should be designated for remand cases. Mm -hmm. And through that, a good number of them have been released. From there, we went to the Attorney General's Department. We paid a courtesy call on the Minister for Justice. We've been to the IGP. We've been to the Minister of Interior. We paid a courtesy call on His Excellency the President. We spent one and a half hours with him behind closed doors. And having painted the vivid picture, he was moved to tears. And there we extended invitation to him to visit the prisons. Thank God for the first time a certain president will be visiting some of the prison installations on the 3rd of July. Okay. We also wrote to him requesting him to grant amnesty to help us decongest the prisons. He has graciously acceded. And, and on the 1st of July, a couple of prisoners, a good number of them, mm. a couple of them will be granted amnesty. From across the prisons? From across the prisons. Okay. Sometimes when we hear that there's a bit of fear because do we know who we're releasing back onto the system yes the the, 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 the law prescribes who can be released first time offenders you know there are some category and classification of um, offenders they cannot be released armed robbers and those hardened criminals they they are not part of it okay. so you can be sure that we are very safe the good news is that the Chief Justice indicated to me on Monday that she wants to join His Excellency the President to visit the prisons. Mm. The UK Ambassador to Ghana has also expressed a desire. So this is a very high power delegation who will accompany the President and the Prison Council to tour our prison you know, facilities. It's important to also mention that we've also reach out to the embassies. We've been to the Chinese ambassador to Ghana that they can help us build a hospital. We've been to the Iranian ambassador, the U.S. ambassador to Ghana. All of them 
have expressed the desire and the support to help us. We've been to countless corporate bodies um, preceding the launch of Brigitte Fiasse on the 30th of this month at College of Physicians and Surgeons at RAGE. We are targeting that to, for a start we need 24 million cities. Mm -hmm. We are saying that if every Ghanaian can donate one Ghana city, okay. we can raise 24 million cities easily. And that can do a lot. We can expand infrastructure. We can equip our skills training centers. We can decongest you know, the prisons. Mm -hmm. That is what we get the fiance. It's a laudable project. I want to appeal everybody to come on board to assist us okay. so that we can be able to deal with the problems that we are faced with. Alongside Pogete Fiasse, we are launching a 10-year strategic plan. And I have a copy here. Mm -hmm. We want Ghanaians to know that every city or every dollar that you donate, there is a plan that will guide us in the expenditure. You know, and for us, this is the panacea to all the problems, you know, facing the Ghana prison service. And we are going to ensure that you know, we, we go strictly by the plan and give us the next 10 years. We are changing the face of Ghana prisons. We want to make Ghana prisons a model in Africa. Mama, it's also interesting to know that um, a few months ago, I visited the state and I had the opportunity to pay a courtesy call on the president of Saginaw Valley State University. They have a criminal justice department and we are in talks with them so that it can affiliate the Ghana prisons um, college mm -hmm. to them. Because currently we have only one. We're supposed to have one for the junior officers and the superior officers. Because of lack of funds, we're not able to organize capacity building for our prison officers. And they are coming on board to assist us in that area. So mm -hmm. a lot is being done. This council, we are not resting on our OS at all. We are working very hard to change the trend. With the support of, of multimedia and every Ghanaian, I believe that we can turn things around. Okay, so Solomon, one Ghana cities, everybody contributes one cities. How do we do that? How do we make that contribution? Are you setting up? Because you know, usually it's easier if you're deducting from, uh, from source. So if, it's, if I buy credit and you can take it out of it or something of the sort, it makes it really, really cool. Yeah. At present, we, we have bank accounts, uh, which will be released to the public. Hmm. We have Vodafone lines um, and uh, other telecom lines that you can, you can get money through mobile transfer. Okay. So at present, we're using these um, channels, but we're, we're open to other channels. So long as we get the money in. What's important for your <coughs> viewers to know is that there will be transparent management yeah. mm. of the funds. It's not going to come to the council. There will be transparent. But is, is it coming to the prison's service? Exactly. Because it's a special it, trust fund, okay. not coming to the regular accounts. Okay. Which will be managed by the council. And okay. every year we're going to render accounts to the public mm. and tell everybody how much has been used. Okay. All right. All right. So, so how can we begin to, because I, I want, and I want that to be the last thing that will be on people's minds. Just not to take you back to the challenges, uh, but two of your vehicles are broken down right in front of our office twice with prisoners. Is that go, either going to the court <laughs> or, or returning to, you know, to their it home? And Martin we want Media. that to stop. <laughs> yeah, um, we, were, uh, we, were, we were apparently on a convoy, and the director general, who is the head of the service, her convoy, her car broke down. You know, that's, that's how bad it is. The other day, I was going somewhere with the council's car, the prison service council. Our car broke down, so I couldn't um, very well uh, get to where I was going on time. Mm. So these, these are challenges the council, um, sorry, the service has. You know, yeah. and uh, not just those challenges. Le I, I get this question a lot, so let me please address it. I get this question about you guys have a lot of farms and you're just sitting there and complaining. It's true that we have farms. Many of them are situated a bit far from the cell, so you have to transport them. That then comes in what you just said. Sometimes we even have to take trotro to get people to the court. Yeah. So then, how do you then get inmates from the prison to the farm to go farm? And mm. even when you do get there. You don't have mechanized farming. You don't have irrigation. Yeah. You're going to depend on rainfall. So this amount of money that we're raising, would it be able to solve all the problems? Because no. the, the problems are So it's not a one-time thing. So it's okay. not a one-time event. It, Project Ifias is not a one It's a lifetime event. Okay. We are asking Ghanaians to contribute month after month. Oh, so it's not a one-time, one, -time, no, one
not a one time one CD. So, okay, so uh, just in wrapping just, up just because of time. CD. We're asking corporations for bigger amounts. Mm. But, but you're asking the individuals if at least they can contribute to one yes, CD. So it's more like one CD or more. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but my question still is how do we do it? Do we begin to do it today? As soon as we get the money, the plan is, already, the plan is ready. We're ready to hit the ground. We have an impl implementation mm. team in place. How, to how do we do the we'll code here? We'll that do? at the launch on Saturday. Oh. We'll announce a short code. This Saturday. And we are, no, sorry. T uh, Tuesday, 30th of, of um, June. June, okay. At College of Physicians and Surgeons. Okay. We're also asking companies, not only money, you can donate vehicles, you can donate mm. equipment for our skills training center. Instead of going to the prisons to go and give them food, the, the Chinese will say, when the child asks for food, don't only just teach the child how to fish. Mm. So we need equipment that will help us give them skills training okay. and make them better. Sure. Okay. I've got a special interest in the, the juvenile. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, yeah. I'll come back to you for right. a discussion on that. I want to know what the plan is for that. I visited okay. the place. Okay. It's mm. good as it is, but it can be better. Yes. Yeah. But I want to say thank you. Let's just say a big thank Seth. you to Multimedia and Seth Kwame Boatin, who also came on board along the line. A lot of work had been done. He came on board along the line, and, and that has really helped us to be able to bring to the fore the issues about Ghana mm. prison service. We paid a courtesy call on your management, and they've, you, they've opened your doors wide to us, and we thank you for this partnership. God bless Multimedia. Amen. We need it. We receive it. Mm -hmm. So Seth will bring us a lot more details on the launch, and then we will follow up. would we'll give you a lot more publication, uh, publicity. Right. But thank you so much for your time this morning. Okay. Uh, so my guest, Reverend Dr. Stephen Wengam, is chairman, Prison Service Council, and Solomon Apia is president, nominee, Prison Council, uh, chairman, project, a fiasco planning committee. I, I, I really pray that you find this uh, very useful because you could be there the next minute i could be there as well so let's make the prisons a better place for all of us uh, there will be more after that launch on tuesday but up next we're talking um citizen movements okay let me save it please do you have ghana flags in your vehicle do you fly yes, uh, the I flags have one in your in vehicle Solomon, do you i don't have the ghana flag okay in please, get yeah. please get it today please get it today that's the oh, okay. that's the latest campaign actually oh, I see. We're, we're flying the flag that's good yeah we should be proud of ghana yeah okay please the initiative is not for me i'm taking the credit here but it's not for me we'll talk a lot more about it after this <laughs>